Well, thank you very much, Charlie, and good morning, everybody, and thank you for taking uh, some time out of your morning to join me. Uh, my name is Grant Chem. I am the manager of sales and guest relations at Frontiers North Adventures. I've been with the company now for 14 years, and I have enjoyed every one of our adventures that we offer. So a little bit about Frontiers North Adventures. We are a uh, wildlife and nature uh, tour operator. We specialize in Canada's north, the subarctic, and in particular, Churchill, uh, Churchill Manitoba. Uh, we are the owners and operators of the official tundra buggies. Most people do know us uh, for that type of adventure, for polar bear adventures, but we have so much more to offer uh, in the Churchill region, uh, both northern lights and beluga whales. We've been taking people to the north for over 30 years now. We are a family-owned and operated company, um, and we're in our second generation of ownership uh, with the same family, which is super exciting, and I've seen uh, both, both parties, which is uh, really exciting to be a part of. Frontiers North offers three different types of uh, viewings in Churchill. There's three seasons that we focus on. Uh, one of them is autumn. Autumn is October, November. Right now, we just finished wrapping up our polar bear season, and it was an amazing season. Lots of bears, lots of happy guests. It was uh, an ideal situation for all of our clients and guests that uh, came with us. The other season is summer. Summer is our beluga whale season, and that's during July and August. That's our summer. Uh, you still have the opportunity to see polar bears during July and August. This is when they're coming off the sea ice. Uh, you're just not going to see uh, as many, and you're not going to see them in the type of uh, atmosphere and, and, I guess, backdrop that you typically would see them in, which is what we refer to as white on white, a white polar bear on white snow. And then our last season, or our uh, coming up season, is our winter season, which is February and March, and that's when we focus on our northern lights and winter nights trips. Um, it is uh, the, the reason for us all getting together today is to discuss and talk a little bit about that. So what I'm gonna go through here is more of a, kind of like a sample itinerary of our departures for our northern lights and winter nights trips. For some of you, you might be aware of the different levels of departures we offer. We offer three different types of levels. One is an adventurer level, an enthusiast level, and a specialist level. An adventurer level is a very, very quick trip. It's um, in and out. You basically are coming to Churchill to see what the attraction is and leaving. Uh, it's a no frills uh, type of adventure, uh, and it's very price driven where our specialist trips are just that. They're meant for our pro amateur photographers, people that just want to take thousands and thousands of pictures. And then we have our enthusiast level trips. Our enthusiast level trips are our most popular trips. They're our most well-rounded trips. They're led by a professional Frontiers North guide. They include everything. Everything once you land in Winnipeg, we take care of everything else from there. Your accommodations, your meals, your activities, your flight to and from Churchill or train. Uh, and we offer those level trips both in our polar bear trips, our summer trips, our beluga whales, and of course what we're talking about tonight is our northern lights and winter nights trips. There's three ways to get into Churchill. One of them I'm not even gonna, um, I'm going to touch on it briefly, but that, that is by ship or boat, and that's coming through the Hudson Bay into Churchill. There's very, very few um, shipping companies that uh, are boats or cruising companies that come into Churchill with uh, ships. Uh, but the most popular way to get to Churchill is by plane. Uh, it's approximately a two and a half hour flight from Winnipeg to Churchill. And the other way is by train. Uh, the train going to Churchill is a little bit longer. It's gonna be two nights and one full day. Um, and the reason for that is halfway up to Churchill, north of Winnipeg, we start going over permafrost. So that's when the train goes quite slow, uh, heading into 
uh, Churchill. So that's why the, the, it takes so long. But an amazing way to travel to Churchill. With our Northern Lights and Winter Nights trips, we offer four departure dates. Three of them are with Air Air, Air to Churchill and Air out back to Winnipeg. And then we have one departure where we take the train to Churchill and then fly back to Winnipeg. Cool thing about being on the train at that time of the year is the dome car or park car is on the, the line. So if the Northern Lights come out during those two evenings that you are heading to Churchill, you get to experience that uh, as well. Our departures are, are in February and March. The simple reason why we do these departure then is because the conditions are perfect. And to have con perfect conditions really for Northern Lights is having no cloud cover. And the best time to have that is when that big body of the water called the Hudson Bay is frozen. That's now uh, not allowing any humidity to go up into the air to cause that cloud cover. So that's why we run these trips during this time of the year. Churchill experiences 300 nights a year of northern lights. We're located right underneath what is called the Aurora Oval. So we have the best access in the world to Northern Lights. So going through a sample itinerary, day one, guests are gonna arrive into Winnipeg and where we're gonna stay is at the Inn at the Forks. It's a boutique hotel. It's located pretty well in the heart of Winnipeg. Uh, the cool thing about this hotel is also where the location of it is, is our Forks Market. Our Forks Market is where two rivers come together, our Red River and our Assiniboine River. And here indoors, there's several local shops, restaurants, uh, pubs. It, it's a very, very vibrant uh, part of our city. And this is why we've chosen this, this location. Uh, lots to see, lots to do, and you get a really good flavor of Winnipeg. So upon your arrival into Winnipeg, what's gonna happen? is you will meet your Frontiers North Interpretive Guide that evening for a, a welcome dinner. Um, if your guests or clients are interested, we do rent uh, winter gear. Uh, we work with partners uh, Canada Goose. So we have Canada Goose parkas, Canada Goose winter pants, and our partner for our boots is Baffin. All Canadian made, all um, available for guests uh, upon arriving into Winnipeg. So they don't have to bring extra suitcases or if people are coming here not just for our trips, um, they don't have to worry about extra extra luggage and paying fees for that. Uh, that is available uh, with us, Frontiers North. So we're gonna overnight in at the Inn at the Forks, day two, what we do is after breakfast, we're gonna head over to the Manitoba Museum. And our Manitoba Museum has just unbelievable dioramas uh, inside the museum. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our planetarium. And in our planetarium, what we do is we help you set up your cameras so that you're ready for taking pictures of the Northern Lights. That's what we want. We wanna make sure that you're set and ready, not in minus 20-ish degree weather but in the comfort of the planetarium, so we can help set you up so that when we get to Churchill, you're ready to take pictures of the Northern Lights. So we'll spend some time in the planetarium, and then we have, a, the museum is a very large museum, so what we focus on is the area that we're going to, and that's um, the Churchill region, or the north. Um, so we're gonna walk through different uh, biodomes of, of the, that area that we're heading to, and we really focus on the Inuit uh, or the People of the North program. Um, it, it just really helps you better understand where we're heading, where, why we're heading there, and uh, gives you a little bit of a background of once you do get there uh, and, and looking for certain things that you're gonna see at the museum, which will, uh, will bring some, some life to the history that you see at the museum. So, after dinner that uh, night, after the museum, we're gonna go for dinner. After dinner, we go to bed. We're gonna wake up bright and early on day three 
and we're going to jump on a plane. So the itinerary I'm going to talk to you about today is the Air Air itinerary. So as I mentioned, it's approximately a two and a half hour flight. We're going to go through the Winnipeg International Airport. We're going to board our aircraft and we're going to head north to Churchill. Once we arrive into Churchill, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a little bit of a tour of the town of Churchill so that you guys can get your bearings of where we are. Uh, it's a, Churchill is a small northern community. It has a population of approximately 900 people. Uh, all the shops, all of the restaurants, bars, hotel are pretty well on one street, which is called Kelsey Boulevard. And Kelsey Boulevard, you can walk from one end to the other end. I'm going to say in approximately 10 to 15 minutes and not stopping for a cup of coffee. It's not a very big town. Uh, everything is accessible by walking. What we do later on in that day, what we're going to have is uh, an introductory photo workshop. So we're going to meet at our, uh, our retail location called 58 North. And our interpretive guide is going to go through a bit of a workshop about your cameras and about how we take pictures of the northern lights. And it's not just about the northern lights, but there's some absolutely amazing landscape pictures that will be available for you. There's what we call sun dogs, which is almost like a, I, I guess it's like a silhouette around the, the sun uh, when it's cold out. And it's, it's stunning to, to see, and to take pictures of it is also amazing. So our first night, though, we're going to head out, and we're going to go for Aurora viewing. Each night that you're with us up in Churchill, four nights in total, we go out each night for Aurora viewing. Our first night, we head over to Wapusk Adventures, which is in the Boreal Forest. Once we get there, there's a, a really nice little cute uh, cabin that we're at. Uh, it's great for warming up. We have hors d'oeuvres in there. We have hot chocolate, coffee, and, of course, uh, some wine, obviously, if you folks would like um, or your guests would like. And the cool thing is outside is a teepee. Uh, the teepee is uh, heated by a, a fire, so people are able to go out there. It's very comfortable. Or if you want to just be in the area taking pictures outside, that's also uh, obviously available. Our nights are fairly long. We're going to start our nights typically around 8 in the evening. And sometimes we don't get back to our hotel till 2, 3 in the morning. It's all dependent on the uh, Aurora activity. But we'd make this first trip, uh, the first night that we go out, uh, it's, we're not too far from the town of Churchill. We're in the Boreal Forest, and it's just a neat way to start off our trip. Every morning we're going to get up. We're not going to have early mornings. Our mornings are going to start around 10-ish in the morning. And we fill your days so that you're getting to see the history and culture uh, of Churchill. Uh, on this day, what we're going to do is a Churchill and area tour. We're going to go to uh, the polar bear holding facility or our polar bear jail. Uh, at this time of the year, there's no polar bears in the area. They're all out on the Hudson Bay feeding on seal. Uh, we can't go inside this facility, but we certainly can go uh, get to it for pictures. We're also going to visit uh, Cape Mary, which is on the, the banks of the Hudson Bay. So we're going to see a lot of very important points of, of interest in Churchill. Uh, and then we're going to round things up by heading over to the Zanatak Museum, which is the Inuit Museum one of the largest collections of Inuit artifacts in the world. And then, of course, as the day goes on, what we're going to do in the early evening, we're going to jump on a tundra buggy, and we're going to head across the frozen Churchill River to the other side of uh, the banks. There we're going to enter in the cloak of darkness, and we're going to head into our Aurora Lounge, or our Thanadolfer. Thanadolfer is part of our Tundra Buggy Lodge. So what we do is we set this up across the shore, uh, across the, the, the frozen Churchill River. We sneak up to it on a Tundra Buggy. Once we get there, the, both the Tundra Buggy and Thanadolfer are heated. They're washroom equipped. As you can see there, there's a large uh, upper deck observation area that you can go on. Our... Uh, 
San Adolfo or Aurora Lounge has very large windows, uh, both skylights. So if people want to sit inside, it's heated, again, hors d'oeuvres and refreshments are served. Or you can get right out on the ground, and most people are outside. It is an amazing experience being out there. I talk about the landscape. I talk about that the aurora is the focus for most people. But I've seen people taking pictures of the stars, of the snow, of the snow banks. Uh, it's just an absolute a magical place at that time of the year. So again, we're going to be out there for a while. To go across the Churchill River uh, at that time of the year, it's going to take us approximately a half an hour to 45 minutes, hour-ish, to get to our location. Once we're there, we're there for the whole evening, and we're ready to go for it for that day. The following day, we get up. Again, we're not getting up early. Uh, we're enjoying our evenings. After we do get up and have breakfast, we're going to head out and we're going to do a dog sledding adventure. And where we head is to a place where we were just at, which is where the teepee was. Uh, and it's called Wapusk Adventures. And this adventure that we go on is called I Did a Mile. Uh, it's not the I Did a Rod, but I Did a Mile. So this uh, dog sledding experience, you're going to learn about the mushers, you're going to learn about the animals, you're going to learn about the culture and the history and why it's so important to Churchill. Um, and then you're going to go for a ride. Your ride is approximately, I'm going to say maybe five minutes long. It's a, approximately a mile long, so it's I did a mile uh, tour. But the gentleman that does it, uh, Dave Daly, he is a local Churchillian. He is an amazing storyteller. Uh, and he is super, super passionate about what he does and and loves to share that with people from all over the world. Uh, it is a very big highlight for a lot of our guests uh, to come in and experience what Dave Daly and what dog sledding means to Churchill. It is a fun adventure. Again, it's not a long ride. When you do go out, you're going to go out with a professional musher, so it's not just you and a, a, a team of dogs. It is a musher that goes with you. And you go on what is called a comatic or a sleigh, and you go on your typical ride, uh, dog sledding ride. This evening, what we're going to do is something very unique and different that nobody else in the world does, and that's a pop-up restaurant. What we do, again, we're going to head across the frozen Churchill River to a different location this time, to Dan's Diner. Dan's Diner is, again, part of our Tundra Buggy Lodge, which we take and we take it across the frozen Churchill River, set it up, and what we do is we have our guests experience an eight-course meal underneath the Aurora uh, Borealis. Uh, we have our chef there who is making food that is very, very not similar, I shouldn't say similar. It's food and it's a taste of what the explorers and the fur traders experienced hundreds of years ago. So each course has a story and it's told by Parks Canada. So Parks Canada comes out and they'll explain why you're having this, this culinary experience or this dish because this is typically what people that came across from France and England would have been eating back in that day and time. Again, not not the same food, but an amazing, um, amazing palate that he puts together. The other part of this is usually typically with each, and not each course, but most of the courses, there would be also a beverage that would go with it. Um, so people are able to kind of tie it all together. Again, bringing it all together, being at the Manitoba Museum and seeing and learning about where we're heading and then continually bringing this forward. But the most important thing here is the, the culinary experience is absolutely amazing. Uh, to be able to have an eight-course meal in, out in nowhere um, is amazing uh, in that itself. Um, what we do afterwards is we're going to go outside. We're going to enjoy a bonfire. And then, obviously, we wait for the northern lights to come out, which is the exciting part of it. Uh, we tell stories and we have just a great time. Uh, and then obviously the lights usually come out. After that evening, we're going to head back. We're going to uh, 
spend our night. Next morning, what we're going to do, again, we're going to head across that frozen Churchill River, and we're going to go for a short little snowshoe trek. For some people, it's enough. For some people, it's not. So what we do is we do a short little trek. We take them on a small little adventure so that they can experience it. And then for the, the adventurous ones, we'll go on a little bit of a longer hike, which is approximately, I'm going to say, five to six kilometers long. It's not very long. It's not a very fast pace. It's at a very, very leisure pace. For the people that don't want to do that, they can just hang out in the tundra buggy or around the tundra buggy. Uh, there's always someone there to entertain them and to tell stories and show them uh, some of the other features that might be on the shore banks. But again, the big big highlight is that, again, that evening we're going to jump on our tundra buggy. We're going to head across the frozen Churchill River. We're going to head over to San Adolfer, our viewing Aurora Lounge and view the northern lights. Um, it's an amazing experience. I have lived in Winnipeg all my life, and I've seen northern lights many times in Winnipeg. And I thought, when I started with Frontiers North, I thought, all right, yeah, I'll go up and see the northern lights, but I've seen them. I, I don't need to see them, but I'll go up and experience it. Well, being that Churchill Bean is under the Aurora Oval, it is absolutely stunning. The northern lights come in in waves, they come in cones, they come in all different colors. Uh, the lights could be very, very subtle for an hour, and then for 20 minutes, the entire sky just completely lights up with different hues, different colors, different waves, and it's just stunning. <coughs> Pardon me. I've had people um, take literally hundreds and hundreds of pictures. Keeping in mind, doing the Aurora uh, Borealis pictures, they're time-lapse photos. Uh, so someone, for someone to get hundreds and hundreds of pictures uh, is amazing. And, and to see some of these images is just, it, it takes my breath away. Uh, again, thinking I had seen it all, I had seen nothing until I experienced this and now understanding why our guests uh, want to come and experience this. It is amazing. It can be a completely pitch black, dark night, and within literally minutes, the entire area could be lit up as if it was daylight. Um, it is, it, it's, it's just something that I, I get it, and I understand why guests want to see this now. Uh, I'm sold on it, and I, I can't get enough of it. Our drivers and our guides are absolutely amazing. They're going to teach people how to use their cameras, how to play with them, how to do certain different things that are unique and different. So it's not just you know three, four, five, or eight hours of taking pictures of northern lights. What we do is we, we show them different ways to see the lights, but What's also extremely important, and I tell this to each and every one of our guests, is sometimes stop doing what you're doing and, and take that camera perhaps and not pay attention to your camera, but take it in. Um, I, I, again, I've been doing this for 14 years, and I've done every one of our adventures. Uh, the only camera I take now is my phone. Um, I don't need to take pictures. I, I, I take it all in and it's amazing watching every age group do that uh, they walk away uh, changed definitely our day seven is our last day in Churchill what we're going to do on this day we don't have a full day there but we're going to go scoot around we're going to go places where we might have missed and or places that people want to get another picture of uh, again tying it all in this picture here that you're seeing, this is the other side of our polar bear holding facility or polar bear jail. Uh, what this was, or what this is, is a Quonset that has been uh, painted. And it was painted uh, a few years ago. What happened was we had, um, it was called the Sea Walls. Uh, and it was a bunch of artists that went up to Churchill and painted probably 12 to 15 murals all over town and all over the outskirts of town. And it was very well known. If you get a chance, check it out. It's called the Sea Walls of Churchill. Uh, and some of these murals are just stunning. Um, and that's what we do. Uh, we take people around to see and or 
see where everybody wants to go. And we try to fit all that in uh, on our last day. We're going to head back to to Winnipeg by air again. Uh, it's approximately a two-and-a-half-hour flight return. We're going to get back to Winnipeg. We're not going to go back to the end of the Forks. Where we're going to stay is the Sheraton Four Points, which is right at the Winnipeg International Airport, simply for convenience because on our final day, day eight, um, is the day that you part. Your your adventure ends with us, so we try to keep it so that it is convenient for guests uh, that have to catch flights and or if they're moving on to different locations, uh, it's just more convenient for them uh, this way. All of your meals are included. All of your activities are included. All your flights, your accommodations. It's like an all-inclusive package. Once you get to Winnipeg, we're going to take care of everything else from there uh, and make this adventure something your guests are going to fall in love with. I know you're out there, Charlie. Hello. Sorry, I wasn't sure if you were finished. Thank you so much. Um, seeing it twice, it's still it's more inspiring. Um, such a wonderful product. Uh, a great week away. We were talking earlier about how it's just so easy. Well, easy for the clients, not for you guys. Uh, it's a wonderful experience and package that you put together to make it seamless and easy for the guests to go and have this wonderful Northern Lights experience. So thank you very much for that. If anybody does have any questions for Grant or comments, please type them into the chat box and I will read those out. Uh, also, it was it was really interesting just to have a deep dive into one of your itineraries. I mean, we are limited for time with these webinars, and sometimes I think it is better to do a sort of intensive class than just do a little bit of everything. So thank you. We do have previous webinars with Grant for polar bear viewing and things. So if anyone's interested in those, I still have those recordings. Um, but yeah, this was a really great deep dive into uh, just into one experience. Well, and it was nice to have that overview at the start as well about the uh, other trips that you run. So Vanessa you, yeah. says, how many hours of daylight is there? That's a really good question. Um, the daylight is, is, I'm going to say at that time, uh, typically the sun will get up around uh, I'm going to say around 8 o'clock in the morning, and I would say by around 4.30 in the afternoon, it's getting dusk, and by 5, 6 o'clock, it's getting dark, uh, and, and when I say dark, it is dark. Uh, our, our evenings would typically start around 8 p.m. Uh, as far as going out aurora viewing, but our interpretive guide and, and what they do is they watch and monitor the aurora activity and they're going to know when is the best time for us to head out. Thank you. So that is still, that's a good long uh, day of daylight. It's not like you're in, uh, you know, the darkness all day. You've got heaps no. of time to do stuff and all those fantastic Definitely. activities that you've got on in this package. And that's the great thing. It is a real mixture of, Northern Lights and culture and history and food and touring. Uh, there really is so much included. So Pamela says, are there minimum or maximum ages uh, folk with mobility difficulties are they catered for? Uh, yeah, so minimum ages, um, everybody knows how their children travel. Uh, a trip like this, they, they are late nights, um, you know, but there's room to move around and whatnot. Uh, I would I would probably say a minimum minimum age for a trip like this. I I would say approximately 12 years old, simply because it is late nights. Now everywhere we go and every place we are in the evenings, there's comfort uh, to lay down or you know um, sit up and sleep. Uh, as far as maximum age, I've had uh, the, the oldest person that I'm aware of, we had an 88-year-old gentleman come from, or I think he was from Israel, um, and he was an, just an amazing person. Um, in fact, probably 
in better shape than most of the other people. Um, as far as mobility, you know what? All of our adventures, all of our travel experiences are very, very soft core. Uh, we will never make someone do something they don't want to do, obviously, and we make it comfortable for them. Uh, if somebody obviously snowshoeing, if that isn't for them, but they want to try it and go, you know, four meters, then we're going to do that. And then afterwards, we're going to help you get back onto the Tundra Buggy, and we're going to make sure that your experience is... I want this to be for everyone. I don't want to limit this. I don't want to say... No, I'm sorry, you can't come. I want you to experience and I will do everything in my power and so will Frontiers North to make that happen. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. It's such a, a great outlook on experiences and yeah, wonderful way to take care of your guests. Thank you. Uh, Vanessa says thank you. Any other questions out there? Otherwise, we will sign off. As mentioned, this webinar has been recorded and I will share it to the CSB Facebook group and also in a follow up email to you all tomorrow. So Grant, thank you so much. Really enjoyed the webinar. Fantastic product. Hopefully that's got everybody excited and send some clients your way. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? No, I just wanted to thank you, Charlie. I wanted to thank everybody for joining uh, joining this webinar. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, I know it, it's hard throughout a you know a webinar like this, and then all of a sudden something pops in your head. Um, please don't hesitate. Give me a drop me an email, send me a, a, a or call me, whatever it takes. Uh, I'm I'm here to help and support, and that's what my job is. So again, thanks for joining me. Awesome, thank you. And of course, I will forward Grant all your details as well so he can do a quick follow up email with you and then you'll once again have all of his details. All right, everybody. Thank you and have a great day.